Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit team demo meeting. Uh, we're in February. Glad everybody could join us today. Hope folks are doing well. We've got some good updates and demos to share today from the team. So let's hop on in. We'll catch up on the latest with Metasploit Framework uh, activity with Spencer McIntyre walking us through. Spencer? Hey, everyone. Let's uh, go through some Metasploit updates, some more. All right, so we have a, a bunch of new modules. Uh, one of the first ones uh, was the modules written by uh, our own William Vu that exploits a vulnerability that was researched and developed by Orange Sai, I am Noob, and Rudex Harsh. Uh, which is in the Mobile Iron MDM, and that targeted CVE 2020-15505. That was a relatively high-profile vulnerability that used an interesting uh, Hessian-based Java deserialization uh, technique. Uh, next up is a exploit and arbitrary file write uh, by our own Grant Wilcox and Zora Hushra, which exploits uh, CVE 2020-28949, uh, and that was a flaw within uh, the pair uh, component of uh, some web-based services in the archive tar uh, utility. Uh, in addition to that, we also have a, another micro-focus UCMDB uh, Java deserialization um, exploit, which was uh, uh, contributed by community contributor uh, Pedro uh, Roberio, which I, who I believe also uh, was one of the researchers who found the vulnerability. Uh, so huge shout out to community contributor uh, Pedro for that. Um, and that vulnerability is identified by CVE 2020-11853. Uh, so getting lots of good Java deserialization flaws in this batch. Uh, another uh, new module we have is for uh, the PRTG uh, network uh, monitor uh, RCE. Um, now this one is authenticated as opposed to uh, the previous vulnerabilities which were unauthenticated. And these, this one was contributed by community contributors uh, Josh Berry and uh, Julian Bendel. Uh, in addition to that, we have a brand new uh, community contributor. Uh, William M made his first contribution and added a check for the Fanny BMP uh, malware, uh, which was uh, present as part of the exploitation of CVE 2010 uh, 2568, which is a relatively old vulnerability, uh, but this doesn't actually exploit the vulnerability, rather it checks for uh, the malware uh, remnants uh, to identify systems that have been compromised as part of this, uh, this attack. Well, that's really cool. We have a few of those now, right? Yes, I believe it is over in the uh, the forensic section. So you can go ahead and check to see if the uh, the system was compromised through that. That's awesome. It was always great to see uh, see a new community contributor. So huge thanks to William M. and hope to see him return. All right, and we have even more. Uh, for WooCommerce, there is a SQLi scanner that community contributor Hoodie added, and this exploits an unauthenticated SQL injection uh, vulnerability in the WooCommerce abandoned cart plugin for versions below 5.8.2. Uh, so keeping up with Hoodie's trend of contributing SQLi content uh, targeting the WordPress platform. And uh, next up is a relatively high profile vulnerability that you may have heard about. This was the pseudo keep base buffer overflow. Um, now, a whole slew of folks worked on this. Um, I myself worked on it with Brendan Waters to develop the uh, Metasploit module, but this was based on the excellent work by Alexander Krog, who developed the exploitation technique that was POC'd by Blasty for the vulnerability that was originally identified by Qualys. Uh, so a whole bunch of people worked on this one, but this was uh, CVE 2021-3156. We can go ahead and we're going to see a demo of this uh, in just a little bit. Uh, and then finally, we have a OneDrive sync provider enumeration module that was uh, contributed by community contributor Stuart uh, Morgan. And so this allows uh, Metasploit users that have compromised a system to go ahead and run this post module and enumerate out some interesting information relating to uh, OneDrive and how it uh, is configured and used and what an attacker can access with it. So huge thanks to everyone with those uh, new modules, uh, but that's not all. We have a bunch of new features as well. Uh, community contributor Hoodie came back and added in two new external module examples uh, in Python. Uh, so now we have an exploit module as well as an auxiliary uh, example script. 
Uh, so these uh, example modules are pretty great since they showcase our external module capabilities and provide a template for users that are maybe are not as familiar with Ruby and still want to contribute to uh, Metasploit. So you can check out the exploit in the auxiliary example and write your content using that as a base. Uh, community contributor B. Coles also updated MSF Tidy to verify that all modules have a module description. Uh, the documentation is very important, so we want to make sure that all of the module content that we're shipping out to our users contains that very important feel of the description, so that way we can articulate to the users the importance of the module and what it's doing, so that way they understand it. Uh, next up, our own AD Foster updated the internal Metasploit library's dependency to inject a currently active module and performing tab completion for the users. So some nice tab completion improvements there. Uh, community contributor uh, CN Cali team added a new function for the report creds to the Kiwi and the Perf password interpreter libraries. Um, I'm personally pretty excited about this. I think it's a fantastic contribution because it allows users that are interacting with the interpreter command line that are using the very popular Kiwi extension and dumping credentials. Those are now reported back over into the Metasploit database. So it makes that workflow a lot more seamless. And now the users can then utilize Metasploit's credential capabilities with the information that they just gathered. So it's a lot more streamlined of a process there. So huge thanks to CN Cali team and to uh, our own Grant Wilcox who helped uh, shepherd that along. Next up, uh, Yoji Shram added uh, documentation for the Uredis login module. Uh, similarly to the description, um, documentation is a huge part of Metasploit because a lot of the module content is very unique. And so we always appreciate documentation contributions. So thank you to them for that. And then we had a, a few bugs fixed. Um, S1E2 B3 I4 applied a fix to the auxiliary scanner SSH in NUMS, uh, which made the error messages optional through verbose settings. Now, when you run this module, it's not going to print error messages for every user that can't log in. The user can silence that out by setting verbose uh, to false, which I believe is the default. Um, or if they still want that information to see if the module is running, they can flip verbose on to true to kind of keep a nice cleaner output there. Uh, so thank you to them. Um, our own Jeffrey Martin updated Metasploit's Docker build process to download a PIP from an alternative uh, hub download source, uh, which is necessary since Python 2 is no longer available. So nice workaround for that to keep the Docker build process running smoothly. Uh, Bcoles updated the local exploit suggestion to correctly the R host information um, instead of crashing. So that way the, the exploit suggestion is going to store that so we can come back to it uh, later on and use that information. And I myself addressed a typo in a previous PR, which affected tab completion in certain circumstances and would cause uh, MSF console to crash under key conditions with the tab completion. So no more of that. Uh, in addition, uh, community contributor Digi Ninja um, updated the WinRM script exec uh, from printing nil when no command output is returned. So another uh, clean, more clean output contribution there. Uh, AD Foster fixed the formatting for external Python modules. In some cases, the format strings were coming through uh, MSF console uh, and they were missing the information. Uh, community contributor Tim WR submitted an update to bump the payload gem to 1.06, which includes a fix from a segmentation fault relating to UDP channels that was causing uh, meterpreter to crash uh, when it was the, the metal meterpreter. Uh, our own Dean Welch uh, fixes a regression uh, error that was introduced in Metasploit 6.027 that caused the vhost header uh, to not be correctly set for some HTTP modules. I believe that was related to the, the URL uh, data store option, which was a newer, newer option. So it's nice to see that that feature is coming out and being used more. And our own Adam Kamek uh, updated a gem to fix uh, pivoted connections that were causing data to be lost when the remote host would send data to Metasploit and then close the connection. And so uh, he bumped the gem for Rex Core to include the fix that would ensure that that data is properly processed and not, and not lost. So, Huge thank you to all of the uh, community contributors and uh, the whole team that helped make uh, all of those changes uh, uh, happen. So thank you all. 
Um, as always, you can keep up with the latest framework changes at blog.rapid7.com, where the Metasploit weekly wrap up uh, goes out every Friday afternoon for your reading pleasure. So, huge thanks again to all the community members who contributed again. And with that, I think we are rolling right into the demo section. So first up is uh, I myself with the pseudo heap-based buffer overflow known as uh, Baron Sam Edit. All right, so this is a post exploit that targets uh, the Linux systems. We only have uh, targets for, uh, for Linux so far, but we're working on uh, expanding those out to uh, different uh, flavors. We have two for Ubuntu as of right now. So we can go ahead and we can see that our user is on Metasploit. We're running as MSF user um, that we, we do not have root privileges. Uh, so that's our typical session that would have been open via maybe like SSH exec or, or some, other, some other means. And we're gonna go ahead and we're going to utilize the pseudo Baron Sam edit exploit to escalate ourselves to uh, root privileges. Um, so there's not a whole lot of options here. Uh, the most important that users are probably going to be interested in is going to be that exploit target. So we can see that we're going to go ahead and set the session. And since we are running on Ubuntu uh, 2004, we're going to leave the target as, as one. Um, so yeah, that, that target is going to be the most important thing that we want to set because that's going to have all of the different, the different offsets. Um, in our testing, uh, given that the target is correctly set, the exploit was uh, highly reliable. Uh, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run it. Uh, it does a check method to check to see the version of sudo and libc to make sure that they are both a vulnerable build. And then it's going to upload a file that it has to compile uh, with GCC that then runs and makes the appropriate call into sudo to trigger the vulnerability, causing a library that we had written to disk. That's that writing uh, pop shells there. Um, and causes that to be loaded. And that gets loaded then with the root privileges, which is what we see there at the, at the very end. So we've uh, successfully escalated up into root privileges. Uh, so does anybody have any uh, questions on that? Nice, that's great. This, this vulnerability goes back almost 10 years. Is that accurate? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe it was, it's been around uh, for quite a while. And so uh, some of the improvements that we're hoping to make are going to be to add in uh, some additional targets as, as we move forward. So far, we have uh, the ones for like the latest versions of uh, Ubuntu and, uh, and Debian. Um, the Debian 10 was actually contributed by uh, B. Coles, uh, but didn't quite make it into uh, last week's cut, but it has already been merged into master. So we're going to see some improvements into this module most likely coming up here. I think a bunch of the advisors are still coming out too. Um, I know Bob Brutus put out a blog, I want to say late last week on um, some Cisco advisories that also included fixes for implementations of this. So we're probably going to see those trickle out for a while. I'll also do a quick call out. If, uh, if, if somebody is wanting to be on the bleeding edge of this, I will call out Blasty did a great job creating a brute force script to find some of the offsets. So if, you know, we haven't published the offsets that people are looking for, they might be able to find it in that uh, Blasty's uh, code. That's a fantastic call out. Thank you, Brendan. And that also reminds me that one of the targets that we included is a manual target. So if you have those offsets through the process that's uh, actually documented in the module docs that Brendan was alluding to, you can plug those into the module and still run your exploit that way. Oh, cool. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, next up is Brendan, who is going to demo the PT PRTG uh, Network Monitor RCE for us. Sure. You ready, Brendan? Absolutely. Wonderful. So uh, this is uh, PRTG Network Monitor. It's a Windows uh, network monitoring system. It runs on a Windows platform. Um, there's a command injection vulnerability, which is nice enough so that you can create a, a notification for yourself that includes a command. Uh, if you want to go ahead and kick it off, uh, it's relatively straightforward. Um, in this case, it's, I believe, from 2018, so it is a little bit older, but there are, uh, there are uh, several versions of this running around that, that are vulnerable to it. Uh, it is, as mentioned before, authenticated, so you have to have the authentication, but one of the great things is if you look at the admin username and password, those are the default credentials. PRTG admin, it does not 
prompt you to change them when you install. Uh, in this particular case, one of the great things, it's super fast, but I'll point out that here we go with Git UID. This runs as system. So while it is authenticated, you get system privileges from this command injection from the network monitor, which makes it really useful. For what it's worth, this was running on a Windows 10 64-bit machine, so you can run this on a lot of stuff. Powerful. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Brendan. Very welcome. Excellent. <laughs>